My third prayer for you is, Lord, if you are going to pour your gift through me to bless others, bless me first. Let me carry the imprint of it. Those are prayers I prayed. They are my prayers. I prayed them before I hit the road. Not every day now, I prayed them. Any, you hear me, but I prayed them. I lay down for nights. My all nights are funny. Depth, 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 oh Lord. Depth, depth, depth. I called it for hours. Height, 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 stature, stature. Mine is not a gift. I'm not usually very attractive. I'm the type, any time, when a prophet comes to prophesy, he will prophesy on one, prophesy on two, on three, on four. When he reaches my head, the anointing will dry up. Prophets didn't usually prophesy on me. I will be angry. Sometimes I'll go and position myself so that the prophet will pass me by. When he comes, he just looked at me and he pass. I was in the airport one day in Lagos and I saw pandemonium. People were rushing everywhere. And Archbishop Idahosa was at the center of it. So I kept walking with, beside them, beside him, and he was holding some, some uh, body on this hand on that hand and, and everybody was greeting him and he was blessing them. Then when he got close to the car, there were only two people with him. I came and I said, bless you my father, bless you my father. I said it vociferously so he will notice me. And he just looked at me and I said, bless you. So I went to the mirror and I looked at my head. I said, there's something wrong with this head. It does not attract oil. He even said it with a scowl. Bless you, my son. And then walked away. What is that? Am I ungodly? But one day, Oedeko was 40. And Archbishop Idahosa came to bless him. And he brought a big bottle of swan water filled with oil. Fresh oil. Wore this big gown, pulled out the bottle and said, David, knit down here. And then he opened the bottle of oil and poured half of it on David. And he said, where is faith? And where are your children? And emptied it. He said, receive unction to function. Uh -uh. And I was standing outside. We couldn't even get in. The crowd was too much and it was drizzling. We came from Ikoi in Lagos and we got to Iyane Paja out in the rain. Then the Lord said to me, in the day of the departing of an apostle, there is always something to receive. Look, what can you see? And I looked at the archbishop. See, two of them came, their fathers to Oedipo. Adeboye and Idahosa. When Adeboye came in, he wore a safari like this. And he was managing it as if somebody, he borrowed it from Central Bank. So when you see somebody careful in his dress, that's how he was. Daddy, my eye opened. How can somebody around 60 years old, call God Daddy. It was annoying. Because even me, I will not. Ah, what does he mean? He's only God, I'm DV. Do you get what I'm saying? You know, some of us are arrogant because of our youth. I couldn't call God Daddy. And Adekboe started by saying, shall we pray? Daddy, my eye opened. I was upset. That was what happened with Saul of Tarsus and Stephen. Stephen called him Adonai, Daddy. That's what annoyed Saul. 
I have studied under the best teachers. And I don't even know him as daddy. Daddy is too personal. How dare you? And so they killed Stephen. But when he got to the gates of Damascus, he too saw the light. He knew it was the same one Stephen was talking to. So he inherited Stephen's ministry. And started calling Jesus, Daddy. So what school did Adeboye get to, to impart that impression of that intimacy on me without direct contact, without meeting? He just said the word, Daddy, and the door opened. Then I understood that there is a level of intimacy But all we spent our time doing was, um, you know, pistis, pistis. You know, dunamis, that is power. Then you know there's catalambano, it's different from dunamis. That's all we knew, me and my friends. We had books, Greek, Hebrew. This man just said what? Daddy. Then my senses came back. And then, you know, I think we, the, he doesn't preach. I didn't know why. He will never come. And so 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 4 corroborates 1 Galatians chapter 8 verse 2. No. I did not understand the level he was at until one day when I printed a card in Kaduna and I invited people for a concert and I called it, called it a musical declaration by the minstrel. That was when I understood that he had sat with the word and was now in the declarative state of his life. So that's why they call him Papa Adibui. Because he does declarations. When he stands up, he's not struggling to share knowledge or to compare what he knows with what you know. No, he's declaring from where he has stood with God. Elijah said, he said, the, the God before whom I stand, I make this declaration. That was when my ministry changed. Then, he didn't preach anything. Oh. He said, so, one day, Jesus told the story of two men who were building their house. One built it on the sand, and one built it on the rock. And you know, when you are building on the sand, it's very easy. Even with a hoe, you can dig the foundation. In fact, with a knife, you can dig the foundation. The other man that was building on the rock, he grew blisters. His forehead sweated. And then finally, he finished his house late after the other man had dedicated. That was what he said, though. Then he said, so today, this great Bishop Oedipo, you know I'm the only pastor who has sons that are bishops and archbishops. And we all laughed, ha 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 ha. Like please, please teach, teach something, some heavy revelation. Then he said, so if you want to give Jesus a gift today, what gift would you give him? Do you want to give him a gift that is founded on the sand or something that is founded on the rock? If you want to give a costly gift, I suggest you give him your life. So I'm going to count to five. If you want to give your life to Jesus, I told my friend, I said, who is going to give his life to Jesus? You didn't preach anything. You just preach. Tell the people. I'm telling you the truth, in the name of Jesus, so that they can then come to Christ. 
Then he said, one, two. Then I had, so I thought maybe a stack of chairs fell down. Three. Then I, people were running from. He said, you know, I don't have time. There is an archbishop here, and it's the birthday of a bishop, and I'm only a pastor. Please come on time. Victoria. The whole front was filled up with people. And we were watching outside, holding a tiny umbrella in the Lagos drizzle. And the Lord was saying to me, what do you see? Collect. Why are you clapping? What did you collect? Did you see anything? But I saw. I saw. Then when he finished, they now said the next person is Archbishop Benson Idahosa. In fact, he came with a policeman. The policeman had a Mark IV gun. Those guns, if they shoot a cow, the cow will rise up in the air before it falls down. And the policeman followed him into the church. Now, look at the contrast. This is one father with a policeman guarding him. This is a second father with a safari acting as if he borrowed the dress. Immediately, Archbishop took the microphone. I just said, but this man is courageous. David, come here. It's as if to say, I am your father, come here poured half a bottle of oil on him, poured the remaining on his wife and children and gave him some quarter and said, take it to your office. And then he began to talk. One verse of scripture, 1 Chronicles chapter 17. One day a man called Zenacaribo, he said, if you are not wicked, why would they give you such a wicked name, Sennacherib? Why didn't your mother call you Paul or Peter or Mary? Is that not simple? Then I was telling my friend, I said, talk. Adeboye finished, I was complaining. This one is even worse. What is one chronicles? But you know what? When the flow of the Spirit came, <laughs> All I said to Jesus was, this man has courage and boldness. And you know what? The moment you see it and name it, it becomes yours. I've given you the secret. Watch people. What you see them exhibit, identify it, call it out by name, it becomes yours. That's what Elijah meant when he said to Elisha, let's keep on walking. What you're asking for is impossible. But if you see me when I'm taken,